I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny. What's up? I have a problem with Lisa. She said that I hit her. <sighs> what? Well, did you? No, it's not true. Don't even ask. And that's sort of what, like, drew me to him. I was like, there's something about watching this guy perform that makes me want to find out more. This guy's funny, and I think in some way he appreciated that. I saw that in him, and um, we just struck up this friendship. Um, I was I was just wondering if you maybe wanted to do a scene together. You wanted this scene with me? Yeah. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Richardson from the Burbank International Film Festival, and you're watching Real Conversations. Today's special guest is Greg Sestero. Greg is an actor, filmmaker, and author. He is best known for his role as Mark in the cult film The Room, and as the author of The Disaster Artist, which was adapted into a fantastic film that tells the true story behind the making of The Room. Greg also has a new movie out called Miracle Valley, which he directed, wrote, and stars in. So, let's get right to it! Oh, hi Greg! <laughs> Oh, hi, Dustin. What's new with you? Yeah, nothing much. You know, I had to say that or we'd disappoint the fans. <laughs> How you been? Good. I um, I was on the road for almost two months, pretty much going everywhere you could think of, meeting a lot of great people. Um, and I think one of the one of the best parts of making movies, telling stories, writing is that it introduces you to so many characters and people out there that you know, think so much like you, but you would never get the chance to meet people around the world. And so that was a real blessing, getting to travel and show the new movie. It doesn't come out until August. Getting a chance to get a feel for it, what people think of it was really great. I mean, a lot of times people will say, oh, it must be tiring, it must be this. And to me, it's funny. It's almost like when you take your foot off the gas and you sit, that's when you get tired because your mind will adapt to what you're feeling and what you're doing. And if you're giving yourself like an adventure each day, you're excited for the next day and the next day and you're challenged and you're like flooded with all these new memories. But if you just kind of sit back and like have nothing to do, I, to me, that's when I feel like something's wrong. So it was a really cool experience just getting out there this year, especially after the, the lockdowns and all that to get out and, be with an audience, show your film, talk to people. It was a, uh, it was great. You also obviously need to rest. You know, it was really a great, great tour. That's awesome. People really like the film, then, huh? Yeah, it's got some comedy in it, which I didn't fully see. But you know, I knew there were some absurd moments, but I wasn't quite sure how it would play with the crowd until you show it. And there's a lot of audience participation, a lot of laughs. So that was. Um, it seems to be my forte is to be part of movies that audiences respond to uh, and collaborate with. Tell me a little bit more about this. So it's called Miracle Valley and it's a horror mystery. But what exactly is the film about and what was the process like of filming it? So I, uh, you know, I had made, I'd worked many years on what the room was going to be in the book and sort of working with that experience to tell a story that you're at peace with. And so once I did that, I thought, hey, I want to get back into movies. That's the whole reason I, I wanted to get into acting in the first place is I love telling stories. So I thought, what a great chance to um, move to the middle of nowhere and just get lost and, and, and try to write a script um, and then make the movie in that environment. So I had this cool hookup where I got invited down to live in this area and kind of study the locations and the, the history. And um, I ended up writing a screenplay about this cult that's set in that valley. It was, it was cool because I got to kind of look around and see what was there, what was available, and then write the script based on those strengths. So I didn't go and just write a script and be like, oh, shoot, now we got to go make that come to life. Um, so it was kind of writing the story backwards in a way where you already knew what you had, and then it was fitting it into, fitting into that. So we ended up making the movie, finishing it just as the pandemic happened. A lot of times we'll sit back and wait and be like, maybe next year, or maybe next, you know, you know, our DP was like, hey, let's maybe wait till spring of 2020, take our time, really think about it. I'm like, you know, you're never going to be fully ready to make a film. Everyone's engaged now. Let's just do it. There's going to be bumps in the road. 
can live with that. Let's just move forward and do it. And had we waited, we would have never been able to make the movie. This was your first time directing, right? Yeah, it was one of those things where I lived in the environment. I wrote the script. I had spent, you know, a lot of time soaking it in and seeing these scenes happen, you know, while being in that environment. So I thought if I'm ever going to do the writing, directing, starring, this is the one to do it. That must have been a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a big, definitely a big challenge um, because no matter how hard you prepare for filmmaking, for film sets, stuff always happens to go wrong or starts late or, you know, there's, there's some sort of challenge in there, um, roadblock, but yeah, it was overall, it was really fun. We shot on RE, we did a lot of handheld settings um, and it was, uh, it was great. It was a throwback to, you know, the seventies Texas Chainsaw Massacre and all that. And you said it comes out August. Will that be like in some theaters or is it coming to streaming? How yeah, there'll be some, some theatrical screenings. There'll be a, um, also some streaming sites and stuff. So, but it's a movie I definitely think pops more with the crowd. So hopefully people get a chance to, uh, to experience that. Awesome. I did want to ask, because I you kind of mentioned this earlier, that you're working on some other projects. And I saw on your IMDb that you'll be directing another film called Forbidden Sky, right? And you're starring in another film with Tommy Wiseau called Big Shark. Is there anything you can tell us about that or is it too early? Oh, so yeah, uh, I've been really in, into the UFO culture. And when I was living down in Arizona and I took a UFO night tour and got really obsessed with that. Um, and so I wrote a script that I am going to be scouting at the Roswell uh, 75th anniversary crash festival um, this weekend, actually. So oh. I'll be, uh, doing a lot of research and the script is a lot of fun. It's totally wacky. Kind of ties into a lot of movies I loved in the 80s and 90s about what we think about UFOs and the contradictions of believing and not believing. So uh, I'm going to be working on that next. And then the shark trailer, that's that's just a trailer at this point, it's not a real, uh, not a, okay. a, yeah, it's just kind of an aspirational trailer. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, any filmmaker out there, we live in a great time where you can go out and make things and try a lot, take risks. And, um, you know, those are the projects that keep us going when filmmakers take risks. So best of luck to everyone out there trying to do it. Action. Oh, hi, Mark. Thank you for watching the Burbank International Film Festival's Real Conversations. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And learn everything you need to know about the festival at burbankfilmfest.org.